I have never been more amused in my life. What's going on guys? It's your boy, Matt Malloy. We're back. It's been a while since I've talked to a camera. A few things before I get into this video. I've been on an absolute roll with content recently, just giving myself those self props, but I've been posting articles every Monday or Friday, uh, strength trading related articles, weight loss related articles, anything to do with fitness. And those are on zatstrength.net. So I'll link that down below. Monday and Friday, an article will always be releasing. So if you don't like really long YouTube videos, those might be for you. In addition to that, my Instagram's up and running with basically the most activity for me in my entire life. So you can expect posts from that daily. And if you're a little bit annoyed with my non-existent YouTube schedule, head on over to my Instagram, give me that internet dopamine, and give me a follow. Which brings me back to this YouTube channel. I thank you guys so much for hanging along with my non-existent schedule. I'll just disappear for months at a time. So I really do appreciate you guys watching, but I think we're about to see the most content we've seen from me in a while. I've been really hyped up with these articles lately, posting to Instagram. So I'm hoping to bring you guys at least one video per week. The YouTube game kind of demands two or three videos per week, so I'm hoping to kind of up that productivity. But right now I'm just shooting for that one video per week and maybe you guys might get a little bit of extra stuff in there. I've also been busting my ass training running recently alongside my strength training, so I'm hoping to bring that onto the channel as well. Don't worry, strength training content's not going anywhere. I'm always gonna be a strong man at heart, but I'm hoping to show you guys how to integrate some running into strength training without losing all of your gains. Okay, that's everything not related to this video. If you haven't clicked off yet, what is the best exercise variation to get your squat, bench, or deadlift through a plateau? It's, it's overload variation, guys. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. Let's, uh, let's look into it. So overload variations. Why do I think these are the best variations to bust a lifter through a plateau with a given lift? So for starters, best is probably an overstatement on my part. That's more so me trying to get blessed by the YouTube algorithm gods with a catchy title. I think it gets a little bit silly trying to claim one variation is, you know, superior to another variation because it's always going to be, you know, lifter dependent with what variation is going to provide a good stimulus for them. That being said, whenever my goal is raw strength for a program, I've always found myself coming back to these overload variations or more so using these overload variations most often in my programming to really drive up that raw strength progress. And I'll be quite honest, I don't even have a very nuanced definition of what an overload lift is. To me, an overload movement is any lift or any variation which you can lift a super maximal load off of the competition variation of that lift. So say you were doing you know, reverse band squats versus your raw squats, obviously you're going to be able to lift more with the reverse band squats. That would be an overload variation. You're lifting more load over what you would be able to raw, hence overload. So you're thinking things like slingshot bench, reverse bands like I just mentioned, uh, decreased ROM motion, so you're thinking, you know, block pulls or pin pulls. Some people can have problems with that where they don't like the starting position and it's actually not an overload variation, but for most people, those shorter ROM movements will be an overload for them. Uh, another good one would be, you know, floor press for bench press. Even normal chained or band variations under my simple definition of overloads would be considered overload variations. Technically speaking, they're under the category of accommodating resistance or variable resistance where resistance is changing throughout the movement. But if you think about it with a chained deadlift, you're lifting more at the top than you could possibly lift from the floor. So technically speaking, it's also an overload movement. So just off the top, there's so many different variations that you guys could be plugging into your program that would be considered an overload movement compared to your normal competition squat, bench, or deadlift. So why do I like them so much? In my opinion, Overload movements are just a perfect tool to break what is usually the toughest part of lifting, which is mental barriers for moving you to that next weight or that next weight progression with a lift. They kind of give you a taste of how that next heavier weight is gonna feel in your hands. And then when you go back to your raw lift, it almost feels like you've been there before. So a good example of this is I'm using wrapped squats or equipped squats for my variation for my normal, you know, raw squat in sleeves. And even though these wraps are giving me assistance in the hole where they're kind of bouncing me out of the hole, every single time I go for a squat with these wraps on, I have to unrack the weight myself and I have to re-wack the weight myself. I'm feeling that heavier weight on my back every single set of wrapped squats. And then the next week when I go into my raw squats again, if I have increased the weight, I've already had that weight on my back. So I'm not having this, oh shit moment in my head, this feels heavy. It's just, I've already been here before. 
I think overload variations get a bad rap because they're most commonly associated with ego lifting. Oh, you're just decreasing ROM on that lift so you can add more plates on. Oh, you're just doing equipped lifting so you can add more plates on. You're not actually lifting that weight, which I could get behind. I can definitely support that argument. A lot of people do use these lifts so they can add weight to the bar just to add weight to the bar. It definitely takes a mature lifter to use overload variations. One who kind of understands, you know, training load within a week, within a month, or within a given block of programming and how that training load is going to affect them. And if I know I have a hot headed lifter, I'm much more apt to give them, you know, tempos and pauses, which are going to actually force load off of the bar as opposed to overload variations simply because you can't trust them to not hurt themselves by having too much load, too much intensity in their programming. But if you are a diligent lifter who can stay in proper intensity ranges, like I said, I think these just become perfect stepping stones to that next progression. Basically speaking, you'll start your week with the raw lifts, your raw competition squat, bench, and deadlift. Once you get through those lifts, your later half of the week will be those overload variations where you're tasting that next heavier progression for your raw lifts. And then you come into the next week ready for the heavier progression in your raw lifts and it just keeps feeding on itself throughout the entirety of your program. And don't get me wrong, this isn't me saying that I don't like pause variations or I don't like tempo variations. You know, there's more control style lifting variations. I absolutely love them. They're perfect for teaching. They're great for hypertrophy applications and for instances of pain. But when it comes to increasing raw strength, I've just found myself to always gravitate towards these overload variations, which get me mentally prepped to lift heavy. I'm gonna pop up some overload variations that you guys could program into your training right now for the squat, bench, deadlift, and even the overhead press, the poor, neglected cousin of the big three. Uh, so you guys can get to using these in your own program. And that'll be it for this one. Wanted to keep this video super simple for you guys. Just get back into the game. It's been a while since I've talked to this damn camera. Uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you guys are doing okay in this crazy situation, this crazy time period we're in right now. And I hope to see you all in future videos. More content to you guys coming soon. Promise. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. Catch you all next time.